What's up, gym enthusiast out there? It's the natural here, and welcome back to another Crocodile Dundee Predict Show. You okay there, Mr. Crocodile? Huh? Wake up, wake up, wake up. Ah, 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 oh God! Me predicting matches for this weekend's fixtures, and we're gonna kick it off, we're gonna begin. It's Liverpool versus Chelsea. The race for the title, and the race for the top four. I'm going to start off with Liverpool, who they're back to the top of the Premier League after a convincing 3-1 win against relegation fight in Southampton. Mo Salah, the Egyptian king, rose from his coffin. And he's back scoring goals again. After um, getting his first goal in this seems like forever really, he to get that monkey off his back to get that goal. First goal he scored since, what, January? Which, for him, is mental. Really. As for Chelsea, they are picking form up just at the right time, and the people who want Sarri out have calmed down a bit. Yeah, they're gonna calm down! I say a bit. I say a bit. They still want him out. They calm down a bit because Sarri is now finally maybe the players are understanding his tactics. Maybe the players are legit, not egotistical maniacs, and literally for the first time are listening to the damn manager. Something Chelsea players haven't done ever. But the player that has stole the show is Eden Hazard. Since he's been back in the team after legit somehow didn't start against Cardiff, he has been nothing short of sensational. Maybe because he's trying to with trying to up his form because he wants to get a big move away from Chelsea and play for Real Madrid. Possibly, yes. But he has been unbelievable. The goal he scored against West Ham was sensational. But had to, and also hustling the door, he's been outstanding since he came in the team. Moving off this cheek has been sensational. For this game, I just believe Liverpool will just do enough in the end to beat Chelsea. Their home record has been absolutely outstanding this season there, but I think they haven't lost a game at Anfield in like two years. I don't think that would change. I think they win this game 2-1. And now we're heading to Italy and some massive Champions League encounter top four fights, if you call it really. It's AC Milan versus Lazio. And AC Milan, after getting back-to-back -back defeats recently, and also against Juventus, which they played really well against Juventus, even though they had a penalty decision, didn't go their way. And uh, also Don Roma is out for the rest of the season with his massive injury. Pepe Reiner's obviously stepped in and to see how he does for them this for the rest of the season. As for Lazio, they're picking form at the right time, but the problem with Lazio is they're inconsistent. You think after they get some big wins against Inter Milan, okay Lazio, you're finally showing Champions League pedigree. No, they can't even beat, no respect, teams in the bottom half of the table. They got to some Lazio up this season. They're so inconsistent, they turn up when they feel like it, and you're not going to finish in the top four if you just legit feel, you know what, we'll beat this team because they're rubbish. And I believe AC Milan will win, and Plantek, who's on goal scoring prowess right now, will get the winner in a 1 0 win. We're heading to Spain, and it's a Seville derby between Sevilla and Real Betis. These two teams physically do not like each other, and this is a massive game for the Champions League showdown in La Liga. What? With Gattafi who's single-handedly been absolutely fantastic this season, they have dramatically overachieved. If they finish, if somehow Gattafi finished in the top four above Sevilla, who has spent a ton of money on players. Valencia, who has spent a ton of money on players. Real Betis, who Sevilla played this weekend, has spent a ton of money on players. It would be it would be unbelievable, it would be like, for instance, Burnley last season finished in 7th. <laughs> or maybe even Leicester win the title, because Gutafe, no disrespect to them, but that squad and the team are 12th or 14th best team in La Liga. No, they're not a relegation fighting team, but man, they have dramatically overachieved this season. But Sevilla have been really poor. At the start of the season, they started like a house on fire, scoring goals for fun. Andre Silva and Ben Yedder were phenomenal. And then obviously the goals have dried up, injuries have happened, and obviously they've sacked a manager and brought a new manager in, so he has to take time to be done get used to the players, and the players get used to his tactics. But they're starting in a real purple patch now, Sevilla, and I believe they have a, it's in their hands, Sevilla. I still think Sevilla are the, for me, box seat to get top four, I still think they have enough 
in your squad to do so. We have Betis, this is a big, big game for them this weekend. I believe that they don't win this game. I think top four aspirations are over for them because I think that'll be nine points. That's too big of a gap with only six or seven games remaining in the season. And they have tough fixtures coming up at us as well. So I believe Sevilla will do enough in the end to beat the arch rivals Real Betis 3 1. And now heading back to the Premier League. And it's a massive relegation six pointer between Burnley and Cardiff. And this is enormous for Burnley because Burnley right now with a great win against Bournemouth away at home. That's a fantastic win for them. Next of Chris Wood, Barnes scoring goals again. And I said a couple of months ago, people, people said to me, natural, why are you not tipping Burnley for relegation? They've been a hopeless all season. Yes, Burnley have not been the Burnley of last season, but Sean Dyche will literally, literally drill that team to the freaking ground if he has to. I think they will stay in the Premier League burn. I think they have, should, like, Sean Dyche just went back to basics. 4-4-2, but the player that's really impressed me for Burnley is Dwight McNeil. Who? He's been absolutely sensational, the young 19 year old. I think he scored three goals for them in the, since he came to the team. He's been a really good um, winger, he's off pace, trickery, he can cross the ball in. He's been a really good uh, player for Burnley in the last couple of weeks and they needed to play like him because that's what they leave lack this season, Burnley, is creativity in the whip. As for Cardiff, I believe the next two matches for them like against Burnley and against Brighton. If they don't at least get four points from that match, four points or maybe six points from those games, I, I don't see them staying up. Do I think Cardiff City will go to Turf Moor and pick up a result? No. I think Burnley in a really good run of four. Their home form has been really good recently and I think they would do the good old Burnley win by a scruffy goal 1-0 against. Cardiff. And now we're heading to another relegation six pointer in this time in Germany in the Bundesliga. It's Nuremberg v Schalke. And Schalke have sacked their manager who single handedly got them second last season, brought a new manager in. Now they're starting to pick form up just at the right time. Uh, they got a really good convincing draw last weekend. This is a massive game for them because if they win this game, it's really in their box seat, really. If they really are trying to get away from that relegation, Meyer really Schalke, who've been single-handedly atrocious all season. For a team that finished second last season, to a team that's really struggling to actually finish to stay in this, the league, it's nowhere near good enough for Schalke. Yes, Schalke keeps selling their best players, like said Leroy Sané, um, Goretzka, um, Draxler, and many others, but they single-handedly have been so far average, it's unbelievable how they've just went from second all the way down to I think they're 15th or 14th right now. Nuremberg, they're just being newly promoted. I think it's going to be difficult for you to stay up. I think it's too big of a gap. I think Unions of Hanover, I think, are kaput. Really means Schalke, I think, will win this weekend quite convincingly. We won. And that just leaves the last game, which is in the year, and it's Leo, who are second versus PSG, who are pretty much our champions elect. And PSG, all they need is one point to be crowned League and champions again. Who gives a damn? We already know they were league and champions in the first game of the golf for second season. As for Lille, they've been single-handedly been my league and team of the season. They've been outstanding. For them to be second above Lyon, and not just be above Lyon, quite convincingly above Lyon. And the fact of the matter is, this time last season, they were 19th in league earning, riding the same crop of players that they have this season. Or a couple, maybe Remy, maybe the goalkeeper. But it's remarkable, really, what a season they have had. And for me, League Arm Player of the Year this year is going to go to Pepe, who's been sensational this season. He's actually up there with him and Kylian Mbappe are fighting for Golden Boots this season, um, which is remarkable. What a season he has had. And there'll be a lot of big takers for him in the summer. And I think they will win quite convincingly 4 1 against Leo. But Leo have had a great season on this, and I think they will finish second. Anyway, let's have another prediction on the channel. Don't forget to subscribe and also hope you all have a swell-tastic day. Enjoy yourselves. Please like, subscribe. Your favorite punk YouTuber, Natural, is out.